Hello everyone, I am Third Mario Brother, and welcome back to Let's Play Sonic 1 for the Sega Game Gear. In this episode, we are moving on to Jungle Zone after completing Green Hill Zone and Bridge Zone in the last episode, and I quite enjoy the music in this zone. It's got kind of a... Uh, I wouldn't say funky, but it's got a really upbeat feel to it, and I really enjoy it. There are these waterfalls, though, which are very, uh... <laughs> they're not very pretty to look at. They're composed of a bunch of triangles, and they kind of hurt my eyes to look at, so I'll try not... I'll try my best to get out of them as much as I possibly can. Let's hit the checkpoint for this level and move on. Now as you'll see in, I believe it's the next act, next act of this zone, wait, is the Chaos Emerald down here? It's at the bottom of one of these waterfalls, and I'm never sure which. I always try every single one. You have to ride down a on a log to go get it. I think it's coming up here in a minute, but anyway. Yeah, as you'll see in, I believe, the next act of this zone, this game tries to do several new things with um, Sonic. They attempted an auto-scrolling level, as you saw in the last episode in Bridge Zone, and in this episode, it's going to attempt a vertically scroll. Well, not vertical auto-scrolling, but a vertical level where you have to go up rather than left to right. Neither of these ideas were reused too much in the Sonic franchise. I don't believe there's ever an auto-scrolling level seen again throughout the entire series. Again, I could be wrong on that. If there are, they're very few and far between. And ver as far as vertical levels go, I'm not entirely sure, but again, if there are any, they're few and far between. So, maybe this game was used kind of as a testing ground to um, see what they should do with Sonic 2. Although that's probably not true, because they were probably in development at around the same time. But anyway, roll down here and make sure not to go too far left or too far right, because you'll fall into this bottomless pit here above this water. Yep, there's log running in this game too, which I thought was a really cool feature added in. A lot of the time it's useless, but a lot of the times you have to, um... A lot of the times you have to do it to get across places, but a lot of the times you could just jump across them. And generally it's easier to jump across, because there are fish that sometimes jump out of the water and bite you and knock you off the log, and then you're dead when you could have just jumped over the pit in the first place. And if you're getting tired of these special stages, which, don't worry, <laughs> I was at 1.2, no big deal, because there's only a couple of them. Well, I believe there are five? I'm not exactly sure of the number of special stages, but th it is a limited number, so once they start recycling, I'll be cutting them out. In fact, I'm probably going to try not to get them later in the game, just to save myself some trouble. Generally, you're going to see Eggman's face in a special stage, which is... I don't know, kind of disappointing. <laughs> I would like to see Sonic's face at the end of a special stage to say, Hey, you accomplished something by getting extra lives and continues. Basically what I'm saying is they should reward me for getting a reward. Is that greedy to say? I don't think so. Anyway, here's that vertical scrolling level that I was talking about. It's kind of awkward doing this, especially with all that movement in the background. I really don't like the look of that, and I'm sorry if I'm pointing that out and making it a lot more obvious to you guys, but it's just something that's always irked me. I would prefer a static image in the background, which would be kind of awkward and, um, look very undeveloped, especially for, for falling water, but, um... I would prefer either a static image or something darker. It's just the look of the white and the light blue. Ah, I can't stand it. All right, let's go ahead and go up here, and we have our famous crab enemy returning from the last game. I believe he fires lasers after a while, but he's not too dangerous in and of himself. <laughs> Especially since he has to be on screen for a really long time in order to fire those lasers. That life up there, I'm not- I don't think I'm gonna bother with it, because you have to go all the way to the right right here and then jump off the edge. It, you kinda have to go out of your way to get it, but like I said in the last episode, lives are extremely plentiful in this game, so I'm just not gonna worry about it. Something that I like doing- ah, dang it. Something that I like doing, and it's kind of just, I don't know, personal preference or a little quirk or whatever, whatever you wanna call it is jumping on item boxes unnecessarily. Whenever you jump on an item box, it will bounce you up to exactly the same height you bounced off. Um, well... How do I explain this? It'll bounce you up to exactly the same height that you jumped to get to it. Like, right there, it returned me to the same, I don't know, vertical height. <laughs> As opposed to horizontal height, you know what I'm saying, I don't, I don't think I have to explain it. But yeah, I like doing that, it makes me feel stylish, and that's something that I've always liked to do with my Sonic the Hedgehog games. Alright, here we are on Act 3 of Jungle Zone, after that unnecessary special stage. 
This too is a vertical scrolling level. If you go into the water off to the right here, there's an extra life there as well. But don't go too far because you can fall off the edge. Like I said though, I don't think I'm going to need too many extra lives. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself because all the bosses in this game, you have to fight them without rings. None of them are particularly hard except maybe the final boss. But yeah, you have to fight them all without rings. So if you get hit once, you are dead. So, in this Eggman boss fight, he'll be dropping cannonballs. It's not too hard, just try not to get overzealous and hit him too many times when he's on one side. I tend to do that, and it tends to lead to my demise. I usually just hit him one one at a time, because trying to run up that um, the little vine ramp, he'll either be pushed back down, and if you roll, it's a really bad idea, because you're almost definitely going to hit the cannonball there. But yeah, if he drops a cannonball while he's exploding, that cannonball won't disappear until it normally would disappear, so be careful of that. You can die after you've defeated Eggman, and I believe you can fall off as well, so that kind of sucks. And yes, here we are. Labyrinth Zone. Why did this have to be one of the zones they recycled? Oh gosh, no, and it's even worse in this game. I hate this zone so much in this game, because not only do you have to deal with moving extremely slowly underwater, you have to deal with Game Gear slowdown. I've played this on Sonic Adventure DX, and it slows down in Labyrinth Zone there as well. I've never played it on an actual Game Gear, but as I've been told, this is actually a part of the game. <laughs> the slowdown is a recurring theme. It happens all the time in this zone, and there's essentially no way to get around it. So yeah! Labyrinth Zone is even worse than it was in Sonic 1 for the Genesis, which is something that's really, really hard to say because I hated it in that game as well. As you saw there, the counter came up above my head and it was kind of flashing. It flashed the number 5. But in this game, you don't get the traditional Sonic drowning music, which is just disappointing and it makes me hate this zone even more because it was so thrilling and so uh, suspenseful. But we just don't get it here. We get a lame beeping sound. And the numbers tend to count down really slowly, especially with all the game's slowdown. Or lag, whatever you want to call it. So when you see the number above your head, don't worry, it's not five actual seconds that you have to wait until you drown. It's far more than that. You can usually get through a good chunk of the level, or even skip an air bubble, because they're so plentiful in this version of the level. Or rather, this game's version of the level. Um, and be safe and get to the next one before you drown, so don't even worry about that. Now, I just lost a couple seconds ago my shield, and I want to mention something about the shield. It functions just as it did in Sonic 1 for the Genesis. Take one hit, it's gone, but it protects all of your rings. But, it flickers in this game. I've played it, like, like I keep repeating, like a broken record over and over. I've played this game on Sonic Adventure DX, and it flickers there as well. Like I said, I've never played it on a Game Gear, so I'm not sure if it does it there. But it's kind of awkward to look at. It does it on emulators, it does it on um, Sonic Adventure DX, I'm sure it does it on the Game Gear. But that's just graphical limitations for you, I guess. Here we are, Act 2 of Labyrinth Zone. And before it leaves my head, I'd like to mention something. The Game Gear is essentially a more powerful version of the Sega Master System. And it's portable as well, so that's very... Big improvement over the Master System, I've got to say, despite how many batteries it might destroy. Um, the Sega Master System had all the same games. It did have a Sonic one that was very much like this one. The camera was a little bit zoomed out. And this version overall, I believe, is just superior. So, I wouldn't even go on worrying about that version. If you guys really want to see something about it, like a one video special or a live stream playthrough, go ahead and tell me down below. But I'm not planning on doing anything for the Master System for the time being, at least. Now here's an Orbanaut, and I hate these enemies in this game because, um... Well, I, I hate this one in particular because it's right there and you can't jump on it and you really can't get out of the way in time either. But a lot of the times, when you're trying to duck, the Orbanaut is too high up and it seems to throw its spheres along the ground more than it does, um, above you. So you can't really duck under its spheres and then hit it afterward either. You have to have it fire all of its spheres, or spiked balls, or whatever they are surrounding it, and then run off, jump over them, come back and kill him. It's really, really a tedious thing, and I don't like it too much. As you can see, the light-colored platforms are the ones that will rise up when you jump on them here. 
So let's go ahead and trust our lives to this one because we're actually running out of air here. I'm not sure if we're gonna survive. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Like I said, air bubbles are very, very plentiful in this level, so there's really no need to worry about drowning. Here's our checkpoint. Yep, if this level hadn't gone on for long enough and didn't feel tedious enough, doesn't it just reassure you to know that we're only halfway there? Well, checkpoints aren't always placed directly midway between the two halves of the level, so that's not exactly indicative of where we are, but we've got a good bit to go. Of course, we have the returning dragon heads, the returning spikes, although there aren't... I don't think there are any on the walls in this game, which is, um... Which is a blessing, because they were very annoying in the first, um... Or, the Genesis version of this level. But yeah, it's essentially the same thing, just longer, a little bit less maze-like, and with a lot more slowdown. And if I haven't said it enough already, say it with me. I hate this level. <laughs> One more thing that I'd like to mention is sometimes when you're jumping out of the water, let's see if I can demonstrate it here, sometimes when you're jumping out of the water, um, your jump won't go quite as high as you expect it to, so you'll just hit the side and you won't be able to get on the platform that you want to. And that kind of sucks. Little bit of a glitch, I think, unless I'm just playing wrong. But whatever, no big deal. The Chaos Emerald in this level is kind of right directly in your path. You don't have to go searching for it at all, it's just at the end of that staircase. And luckily it's not anywhere underwater, or anywhere far away from an air bubble underwater for that matter. Moving on to the boss of Labyrinth Zone. If you haven't noticed yet, the Act 3s in this game are far shorter than they were in the Genesis version. It's just one small opening bit, which usually has an extra life at some point, which I'm gonna go get right now and then the boss of the zone. Getting the extra life in this zone, you don't have to worry about drowning, by the way. Um, you have infinite breath in Act 3. I guess Sonic spontaneously grew gills halfway through the <laughs> Labyrinth Zone, and then he loses them afterward, probably during the boss battle. Here we are with the Eggman boss at this level. He's... it looks like he's in the same machine that he was for, um, the Bridge Zone boss, and... Maybe even the same machine he was in for the Jungle Zone boss. I don't know, maybe Eggman's getting a little bit uncreative. Maybe it's a combination of the two, but yeah. He'll pop up in the middle and shoot his two bullets like he did at the Bridge Zone boss, and then he'll pop up in the top left of the screen and fire a homing torpedo, and on the top right of the screen and fire a homing torpedo. I, I recommend just waiting until he's about to fire a torpedo to hit him, because that way it's much easier and much safer. You can hit him usually three times safely before he fires. And there we go, pretty easy boss. Now, we're going to free all sorts of animals into the water. Luckily, they're all aquatic animals, so they can all breathe underwater. Well, thank you all very much for watching this episode of Sonic 1 for the Sega Game Gear. I will see you all next time when we move on to the, to the next zone.